I thought I'd explore it a little more, and I heard that the only way to really understand what has happened to us, why we breathe so poorly now, is to understand our evolution. So I went to the University of Pennsylvania, to the Anthropology and Archaeology Museum, where they have one of the largest collections of pre-industrial skulls in the world. And one thing these researchers told me, they said, if you're going to understand breathing, you have to understand the mechanisms of it. And they said, of the 5,400 different mammals on the planet, why are humans the only ones with crooked teeth? If you look at chimpanzees, perfect teeth. This gentleman, the Berveraf macaque, <laughs> perfect teeth. Marine mammals, guess what? They all have perfect teeth. Even my dog, I pinned her down, took a picture of her teeth, <laughs> and they were perfect. <laughs> Meanwhile, this is what we have. This is pretty, pretty common for young people to have teeth like this. And if we don't do anything about it, they can end up like this. So 80 to 90 percent of us have crooked teeth. Why? So the next question they asked me, they said, of the 5,400 different mammals, why are humans the only ones who have sleep apnea? Why are we the only ones that snore? Some bulldogs snore, but beyond that, humans are the only ones. 50 percent of us snore and a quarter of us suffer from sleep apnea. So why? Why would this happen? Um, I've always thought that crooked teeth, I thought that this was a genetic problem, but then I thought about it a little more, and my parents had great teeth, and I had awful teeth. Then I thought, huh, sleep apnea, that's always a problem associated with obesity, but it's actually not. Tens of millions of skinny and normal weight people also have sleep apnea. So the answers they told me are in the human skulls. And by looking at evolution, all of this becomes clear. This is what we looked like about a million years ago. So you can see how broad the face is. If you could see his mouth, it would be huge, enormous nasal cavity here. About 300,000 years ago, looked pretty much the same, a little skinnier, a little slimmer, still a huge nasal cavity. You can see his remaining teeth here, perfectly straight. About 10,000 years ago, we looked like this. A lot skinnier in the face, uh, still pretty broad, healthy, smaller nasal cavity. If you compare it to Neanderthal with a human, Neanderthal is on the right, of course, you can see this forward facial growth, this pronathic facial growth here. This guy could breathe so easily, whereas humans were getting flatter and flatter. In the last 10,000 years, here's where things got really crazy. This is how we looked like about 8,000 years ago. This is about 2,000 years ago. And coming up here is how we looked about 300 to 400 years ago. So you see how much skinnier and how much longer our faces have become. But by far, the biggest change happened in the last 400 years. That's when we went from having this, all having this forward facial growth to having this retruded and recessed facial growth. So that's about 300 years ago. That's about 200 years ago, and now about 90% of us have a facial growth that is recessed and flat, much like mine. So if you drew a, um, a line from the top of the ears and a perpendicular line in front of it, almost every single ancient skull is above that line. And now about 10% of the population, or 5% of the modern population, is below that line, sometimes way below it. So here's another way of looking at it. This woman represents the sort of facial growth that we had about 500 years ago. As the centuries pass, she starts representing where we are now. So what happens when your face grows backwards and your mouth grows smaller? Teeth have nowhere to go, so they come in crooked. They have to fight for space. There's no room for them. About 300,000 years ago, this is the oldest human skeleton that we have. Check out its teeth. It's perfect. So this is a um, pre-human species. Perfect teeth once again. So these guys didn't have dentists. They didn't have braces. They didn't have headgear or orthodontists or, um, you know, scope or Invisalign. And they all had perfect teeth. <laughs> so although it may seem like it, I'm not here to talk about dentistry. I'm not here to talk about the merits of facial growth. Um, you know, everyone is beautiful in his or her own way. This guy has been talking about this stuff for 60 years, and no one has listened to him. In the last 10 years, this is John Mew. 
Last 10 years, researchers are finding that he's been almost entirely true. His son, Mike Mew, is now doing some amazing research. So is Ted Belfour and Mariana Evans and on and on and on. But what I'm here to talk about is how all of this shrinking in our mouths and our faces has affected our breathing. Because guess what else shrinks? Our airways. So what you're seeing right now is what has happened to uh, the airways in humans. This is why we have sleep apnea, this is why we have crooked teeth, and this is why we can't breathe right. And this is also why, one of the main reasons why we have so many chronic problems. Um, I just looked up sleep apnea on uh, a good friend PubMed here, and there's like 7,000 different articles showing the deleterious effects of sleep apnea. So are you guys depressed yet? because I, I certainly was when, when I discovered all of this, but it made just such perfect sense. You, you just can't deny it.